Players, I'm Mark Sanamatino, and this is your weekly dose of everything gaming, film, entertainment, frankly, anything we want to talk about. Sitting beside me is the man, the myth, the legend, Julian Price. How are you, Jules? I'm pretty good. You're pretty good. Yeah. You've had a big week. We'll I've get to that. And week. Ryan Mason, next to him, he's got a new hat, he's got a new jacket, he's a new man. Yeah. Looks Fantastic. Fresh. <laughs> that is fresh. Not quite good as the man, the myth, the legend. The, what a pump up, Jules. Yeah, I know. I don't think he's. I don't know if anyone can live up to that during this week. <laughs> but I needed to, to G it up because it's a huge week, not only in the world of video game and film, but also for us. I got a haircut, Meso got a new hat, Jules had a second kid. What? We're the real winners here, aren't we? Like, new hat. Yeah, new hat's big. New hat's big, all right? Don't worry about little Eliza, the newborn yeah. in your life, Jules. How yes. is she? Well, she's doing great. I'm doing okay. I was about to say, you've managed to slip out and get here, so you're doing all right. Uh, I, it was a, may have been an excuse to get out of the house, but no, uh, it's all doing great. And I'm looking forward to going back home tonight after this and seeing her. So. Beautiful. Well, let's get stuck into it. Why don't we? First, the news headlines before we get into the deep dives, boys. Why don't you preview what we got coming up a little bit later in the show, Meso? Um, well, we're going to be talking about the big announcement out of Gamescom in Germany. The uh, NVIDIA has announced their new range of GPUs, and it looks like they're going to have ray tracing, which is big thumbs up for gamers out there, especially PC gamers. We'll explain what that means a little bit later, but yeah. basically they're coining it or you know determining it that... It's going to be a revolution in gaming in general. Yep. And how about you, Jules? What are you bringing to the table this week? Well, we're going to see a few older games make a return uh, to the Nintendo Switch. Yes, we've got to talk all about the ports, the port debate. Do we care? Do we need these? Why are they bringing them? <sighs> Let's start with the headlines, though. And it's a game that isn't a port. In fact, it's a game that I'm not even sure is coming to the Nintendo Switch. But it's Spyro the Reignited Trilogy. That is a remake of the original Spyro games, very similar to what Crash Bandicoot did with the Insane Trilogy, a game which has continued to sell gangbusters in the UK. I think it's been top of the charts for eight weeks now. They really need a new FIFA, the UK, don't they? <laughs> they need a new FIFA. <laughs> well, Spyro has been delayed. It was supposed to come out September 21st. Now that's been pushed back to November 13. Uh, Boys for Bob, oh, sorry, Toys for Bob, who are the game's creators, which, by the way, is the worst <laughs> studio name ever, Toys for Bob, um, have basically said in an online blog that the remastered trilogy is something they would have put all their effort in and it needs a little bit more polish. I mean, do you care that it's been delayed? We, we Fair enough. I mean, how many years ago did Spyro actually come out? I'm sure that we can wait a couple more months. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, it's going to be better in the long run than hold it back. Mm. And yeah. I'm secretly hoping they do bring it out on the Switch. They did Crash Bandicoot a bit yes. later on. so mm. Different hopefully. different developers, obviously, but we'll see what happens with the Nintendo Switch as we uh, have already mentioned and we'll be Could be seven years little, later. Yeah, three <laughs> years down the line we'll get it. Into the realm of film, the James Bond director Danny Boyle has departed from Bond 25 over, quote, creative differences. Now, there was a big announcement uh, on the 007 Twitter account that the director has decided to no longer direct, which seems... Completely counterintuitive to what a director does. Um, but Michael G. Wilson, Barbara Broccoli and Daniel Craig have all announced that due to those creative differences, he is no longer going to be on the set directing Bond 25. In fact, that's supposed to come out in November next year. So It's pretty soon if I haven't started filming. And they haven't even picked a, uh, the person to play Bond for the next film as well. Like, no, I mean, that's, yeah. you can still delay that though. After Daniel Craig's done, because this is of course going to be his final God. film in the, the character, it's hard to believe he's already been doing it for, what, five, six years? Even longer now? Uh, he feels like Bond to me. I've, I've been yeah. loving Daniel Craig as Bond, so. Yeah, yeah, Casino is probably my favourite. Mm -hmm. So I, get, I guess whatever he says goes, hey? <laughs> Do you remember the uproar when there was a blonde Bond for the first time? Yeah, yep. yeah. How yeah, many yeah. people freaked out over that? It's crazy to think that he's now, as you said, just, you know, Part of the furniture, almost, yeah, in the yeah. Bond franchise. It's going to be weird to have a new, a new Bond, but mm. anyway. Speaking of something else coming late next year, almost like Game of Thrones, this series seems to have a million uh, months and years in between its, its seasons. <laughs> Rick and Morty have released a new teaser trailer. It's only 15 seconds wrong, uh, long. It's running on Adult Swim at the moment. And it looks insane. Jules, I know you and I just caught a glimpse of it two minutes before we were recording this. And they can get away with anything. It's the Rick and Morty creators, yeah. like, seriously. It's an anime-styled 15-second teaser trailer. It's a 15-second <laughs> brain-melting trailer, yeah. isn't it? You've got to be on something to really <laughs> yeah. understand it. There's no context. Nothing's really mentioned. No. We see good old Much Rick. like the show, though. 
<laughs> true, yeah. true, true, true. There's not a whole yeah. lot of context to that show. <laughs> but we don't know what they're alluding to. That's um, sort of the weird thing. It's like, well, what, what is this supposed to tell us about season four? Is it completely yeah. different? Is this the animation style we're going to get? We just don't know. And our final headline, and it's going to be a local one for us down here in Melbourne, chilly old Melbourne during this Australian winter. Although it's, your mum's got the dryer on and it's nice and warm. Yeah, mum has heated up the, the shed. <laughs> the shed is great tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's that uh, the Battle Royale a juggernaut Fortnite is going to be headlining the inaugural Melbourne Esports Open. 10,000 people a day expected to get down to what is effectively our tennis centre down here, boys, where the uh, Australian Open Australian is. Australian Open, yep. I reckon they'll get 10,000 a day too. Do you reckon League of Legends has anything against, you know, or holds a, a torch to Roger Federer and Nadal? Or <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> They might get watched more on Twitch than uh, the Australian They'd Open. They probably get more on views Twitch. on Twitch than what the Australian Open gets on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the prize money is going to be big for the eSports Open too, but I can't imagine it'll be anywhere near the Australian Open prize money. No, no I, although... I'm for using the tennis centre though, like it's sitting there. Yeah, I mean, now they use the tennis centre for other things. Oh, and the netball's in there at the moment, I yeah, suppose. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there is some big prize money on, on offer, Jules, you touched on. Um, I mean, $67,000 for Overwatch, even more money for League of Legends. That game yeah. is insane, just keeps going from strength they'll to just strength. just about pay the airfare to get the pros over here, I reckon. Yeah, but they'll come. Yeah. They'll come. They're getting flown over, just like number one and two seed in the Australian Open get all their, yeah. their stuff sorted out. But let's deep uh, dive deep into our first major topic of this week, <clears> and it's... The port fest that is the Nintendo Switch. Now, I love my Nintendo Switch. Jules has only had one for about two weeks and he's been playing it like crazy. But time and time and time again, it's the same news headline that comes up for the Nintendo Switch. Mm. It's not new games, mm. it's these ports. And in this week alone, we got the announcement that Diablo 3, uh, an ultimate definitive edition, is coming to the Switch. That Saints Row the third of all games is coming to the Switch. Not the fourth one, the third one. And also a Hat in Time, which is a really cool indie platformer styled similar to Banjo-Kazooie and Super Mario 64 is coming. And I will actually get that one. That's one I've been holding out for, hoping it would come to the Switch, despite the fact that its developers said it was not a chance. So I wanted to ask you, gentlemen, I know you don't have a Switch, mate, so, but does the port, so the, the wave of ports potentially stop you from buying one? Well, usually because I've probably played them. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, that's the problem. Well, yeah. what, what I'm thinking is these developers are going, hang on, people are actually buying the Switch and enjoying the Switch. We should put our games on there too. Yeah. I think eventually everyone will just catch on and go, we've just got to release it at the same time. Yeah. Even, even yeah. if it's more work for them to get it working on the Switch. Yeah, I think it's well worth it. I mean, they're pricing their games at the same price mm -hmm. as, as a PlayStation or Xbox game. So why not just... Add the extra income. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we know we've had so many ports already. Like we know that pretty much everything on the Wii U has come over. Bayonetta 2, uh, the Legend of Zelda version of Dynasty Warriors, which are Hyrule Warriors, which is, uh, is is great, but I would never buy that again. Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker of all things. Only the Mario Kart 8's come. Just the one thing that we actually wanted, which was um, the Super Mario, uh, God, Super Mario Maker hasn't come over yet. Yeah, but yeah. it seems like this is constantly happening. We know that we've got Dark Souls coming out now in November as well, the remaster. I mean, it's, it's good if you want to want. play these games on the train. I guess that's the only yeah. difference is it, yeah. it's now portable. For, train or know, plane, yeah. Like Diablo 3, if you've been kicking around playing that still, um, you can now play it on a train. I guess that's the only real difference. Mm. But I wonder if it caters more to people that were already fans. They thought, I loved this yeah. on my PC, yeah. now yeah. I'm going to try it on Give my it Switch. Go. Or yeah. if it's, you know, oh, I missed out on that because I never had a PC because I've only ever had Nintendo consoles now. All of a sudden, I can play it. It's right there. But next I, time Mario. I don't know about you guys, but I didn't think Saints Row the Third was a, a massively successful game. Yeah, I don't think anyone's, you know, they're not missing it, are they? You never know. Maybe Especially they, when the fourth is out and you're not getting the fourth. It boggles my mind that they haven't gone for Saints Row 4, but apparently that was designed as an expansion to 3, so maybe mm. that's why they've gone with number oh, 3. Yeah, yeah. But maybe they caught wind in the pipeline that GTA... Is going to come to the Switch at some point, yeah. and they're just like, "We need to get this out now because once GTA is there, no one is buying our yeah. game." Yeah. But I suppose my point is because we didn't touch on this last week when that fantastic, phenomenal uh, trailer for Doom Eternal oh, came so out, yeah. which yep. is of course um, the sequel to the reboot Doom. Yep, that's coming to Switch day and date. Which is going to be huge for that's the great. system. It's really. fantastic. Mm. Yeah, no, that's really the way it should be done, really. Yes. And we know that obviously Bethesda has been pretty good at supporting the Switch so far. We, they have brought Wolfenstein 2 over, they have brought Doom mm. over, they've brought plenty else over, but this is the first one day and date. So I was 
Do you think this is like a shift? Are we going to see more developers doing this? I think we will. After the success of Skyrim being ported onto everything, including your fridge. (laughs) (laughs) They're finally catching on. You know what I mean? (laughs) Could you imagine? (laughs) One of those touches. Anyway, don't worry about it. It's probably Uh, a thing. But it's good to see because Bethesda's, you know, one of the biggest. Yes. It's good to see that one of the biggest is doing it. But it's frustrating to me that Bethesda's doing it, but somebody like EA... Isn't bringing you know your Fifas, your Maddens, yeah. your every every sport game. Under I'm the sure sun. they've got the cash to buy the license to release a game on the Switch. Like it's undoubtedly, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, it seems as though, at least for now, all the announcements we're getting this week are older games. They're all, they're all old ones. That being said, I'm sure some people are very very interested. That being said, in terms of where the Switch is going to stand in the console race, we know that the PS5 and the Xbox <clears> Two <throat> or whatever they're going to call it aren't that far. Into the future, really. They're mm. on the horizon. If it's not next year that they get announced, it'll likely be 2020 that they yeah. come out. And today, or sorry, I mean, we were discussing this today, but this week has been a really interesting one in terms of where gaming goes next because NVIDIA, uh, of course, the the leader when it comes to all sort of graphical chips, may so has, has brought out what they are, are calling this complete revolution in the graphics space. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this card looks amazing. They announced it. Um, it's what it's six times better than the current uh, GTX 1080 Ti's, mm. but the real the real changer here is the, the ray tracing, which is all to do with lighting. We should probably say this is called the GeForce Sorry. RTX 2000. Is that G- G- GeForce? Remember that yeah. GeForce, GeForce RTX 2000 series. Mm-hmm. So there'll be uh, 2070, 2080, and a 2080 Ti mm. off the top of my head. Uh, the Ti being the top of the range. They're they're priced. Fairly reasonably, they're about the same cost as what the current top of the line GPUs are. Mm. Now, if you're going out and buy a 1080 now, it costs around about what what they're what they're selling for pre-order now on their website. But um, yeah, the, the real change is, is how it handles lighting, and that's going to be the, the the best thing for game developers. Is now that they when they develop a game, they won't necessarily have to code in or develop lighting effects. Mm. This card will do it all in real time for them. And the little clips that they showed during their press conference, which, by the way, went for an eternity. <laughs> it was one. two hours to a- announce a one. chip. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. really. And when you're holding the square, there's yeah. two fans on it. <laughs> it's not impressive, mate. No. It's not impressive in the hand. We yeah. want to see what it does. I mean, that real-time uh, ray tracing does look phenomenal. The one that stands out to me is when they had a car just positioned there and they had all these coloured lights sort of whizzing past it and you just saw it reflecting mm. off not only the bonnet but the windshield and, you know, the, yeah. the seat and all the... It's incredible. You don't really think about the amount of detail that comes in yeah. building a photorealistic image, but this is seemingly the the way that we're going to do it and it's all built into this card. So, yeah, I mean, as you said, it's about, what, 1200 bucks. 1200 bucks US. 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 Um, which is it, it's that's reasonably priced. That's the top of the line. Mm. The top of the line. And uh, from understanding, can you anyone with a computer just basically open it up, pull out their old graphics card, and plug this one in? Is yeah. that? Yeah, I mean the the ray tracing won't work though on games that aren't developed for it. Okay. So, so it'll, it'll just, just be it'll new run games. It'll, but it will still run them. Speaking of though, in terms of games, because Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yes, uh, Metro Exodus, and Battlefield Five are probably the the three big names out of the the ten or so games that have already been. Announced to support this brand new system. Yep. I mean, we I've seen a bit of how they run, and at least to me, when I was watching the Metro Exodus stuff, it actually looked quite dark. It did look dark, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Maybe we just turn up the brightness is, on your screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, Metro is sort of a darker game. I it mean, is. I play a lot of uh, Escape from Tarkov. That's the same. It's a very if you go into a room, it is a lot of glare, and the room is pitch black. So I think that's the sort of design that they're after. Mm. Whereas the, the, the bit I saw with Tomb Raider just looked amazing, yep. like in the jungle and the light coming through. It looked mm. absolutely amazing. Well, weren't you saying that every no matter which way a leaf is, yeah, it'll, so it'll refract the light? Yeah, it will do it. The, the car will do it all in real time, I believe. So the, whichever, yeah, wherever the light source is coming from. And by the way, to do this, they've got a, a top, it's called a Turing design. This is the chip that's inside it that's <clears> making this all sing. Uh, that has 18.6 billion transistors <laughs> and yeah. measures. On a, a 754 millimeter, so what's that like? 7.54 centimeters. Yeah, it's that tiny. Like that's that some is nano insane. technology. Isn't <laughs> that's that? ridiculous. Oh my god, I love it. I mean, I, I don't really understand it at all. I don't know how no. you fit 18 billion anything into that, but no, geez, that it just boggles your mind to think about where we are at the moment. And they said that we're 10 years ahead. 
which is crazy. So where are we going to be in ten years? Well, yeah, I mean, and, and also <laughs> this is this is great for the PC guys because this this looks like they're going to start shipping these around about the twentieth of September. Yeah. So which is fairly soon, and the PC guys are going to. I wouldn't. The, the pre-orders are going to sell out for this sort of stuff. Well, they've already limited the amount that you can two per person, so yep. they're already worried about it selling out. Yeah. But the PC guys are going to be all over this, and then and then the um, the consoles are going to the new consoles that are going to come out mm. will be all over as well. But well, that's what I wanted to ask. Do you think it's actually going to be in the next Xbox, in the next PlayStation? Well, it has to be now. Mm. They've announced yeah. it. It has to be. If they're not. But it'll like, be a massive disappointment. What would the what would that price the console at though? <clears throat> Like, no one wants to pay over $1,000 for a console. No. no. It didn't work for the PlayStation 3. Not I don't even, know if it's going to work. Yeah, I don't, not even close to $1,000. So, $1, I don't really. think it'll be the same. Or maybe it's a variation. Mm. But, I don't know. Wait I think, it's, I think it, the, the game developers out there must just be, you know, clapping their hands, like applauding NVIDIA for this. Because, I mean, they're just going to love it, aren't they? They should. They yeah. should. And one of the games that it is going to uh, release or, or have support for very, very early on is Battlefield Five. Now... Coming out of E3, I wouldn't say that I was overly excited for Battlefield 5. Mm. Although, this week, we got a brand new trailer for this game at Gamescom, I believe. It was their sort of multiplayer trailer, I, I suppose. And right at the end, we got an indication as to what Battlefield 5's Battle Royale is going to look like. And yeah. also, all rolled into all of this, we finally got an an. an, an we finally got an announcement <laughs> for the date of the beta, which is going to be September 4th. Yep. That'll include two playable maps and game modes. But this trailer, this is the thing that's got me excited. Yeah, well, seeing this trailer, I'm going to buy it. Huge. Because yeah. everything about that, not the music was amazing. Yeah. I've already forgot what the song was, but I was just thinking Rising about Sun. it. Rising Sun. Yeah, Rising Rise. Sun. Oh, I've still got it in my head right now. Yeah. Yeah. Epic, epic remix of the Rising Sun, uh, House of the Rising Sun. As well as, I mean, just the, the graphics in this game. Everything was in engine. I mean, it just looks like it runs smoothly, and the destructible environments. Yeah, that's what's getting me over every other. That's always been the, the number one thing. Yeah, well, for that's Battlefield. been Battlefield. That's been their thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, on the Frostbite engine, have destructible uh, environments. I've got to say, sets them apart from COD. Yeah, uh, I've, I'm not really a big battle royale player, mm. but seeing this that final little scene in the trailer and how it's going to work. I think I'm going to buy it too. With like, with like the forest fire or explosion. It's actually a really in. good concept. Yeah. And yeah. just, I mean, because they gave us a real little hint. You know, we saw the Battlefield 5 name come up on the screen and we thought that was going to be it for the trailer. Mm -hmm. But then right at the end, Circle of Fire. Yeah. And you just know that you know, <laughs> Circle compared, of Fire. Burning <laughs> Ring of Fire. <laughs> compared to uh, Fortnite in particular, which is just that blue line, yeah, essentially. Well, same yeah. PUBG. Yeah. Um, this looks really intimidating because if you saw a wall of flame coming yeah. through, and not only coming through, but destroying buildings. No, yeah. It's reverse right Independence there. Day, isn't it? Amazing. <laughs> I, it, it blew my mind when I saw it. I thought, this is one that I'm going to pick up. And again, I'm mm. probably similar to you, Jules. I mean, I, I like first-person shooters, but really haven't gotten into one for a long time. Come sit over with him with me here, boys. <laughs> no, no, I bought here. PUBG. I bought it. Hey, all. I'm going to oh. play it. We'll, we'll game next week. Yeah. Well, if you want to get your hands on it early, want to be part of the beta, you need to essentially pre-order it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got to preload the game from September 3rd. So you are good to go. Let's hope it's better than your experience with Black Ops 4, Meso. Body <laughs> server issues. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Three games out of 200? that you three, tried out of, to three out of 200 in three days. Yeah, that's yep. not ideal. <clears throat> That's your news for this week. Of course, we always wrap up Must Play with a little bit of an insight as to what we personally have been playing. We spoke to you last week, Meso, about Yakuza, Kiwami, yep. the remake. Uh, your uh, review is going to be up on the website by the time we upload this. Yeah, it's up now. And, um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've been smashing it out lately, um, you know, trying to get as much as I can before I write this one up. So do you rate it? I do. It's a lesson in how to re... You know, you see a lot of games that have got updated textures and it's called remaster or something like that, which is essentially what this is. But these guys have really upped the game yep. here. Um, they have revoiced all the cutscenes. It's on a brand new engine. It looks amazing. Combat's way smoother. They've got a whole new campaign. They've got more signature moves. It's a it's a terrific game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. Look, we look forward to reading your review. Mustplay.net.au if you want to get the in-depth written review from our man, Ryan Mason. Mm -hmm. Julian Price, I mean, the fact that you've got a kid has really helped the fact that you've got a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> because now when you're That's nursing, you've got to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Three o'clock this morning, baby on the arm, Nintendo Switch slightly like this. Just crook, a little askew. Just crook neck. Just crook neck. Yeah. 
Uh, I've been playing Breath of the Wild. Finally, I know, finally. and I, I the game I've been telling you to play for eighteen months. You well, finally I've been wanting up. to, but you know, I didn't want to splash out, but I How, did. Been building I spoiled groups. myself. Yeah. How far into the game are you? Okay, I've just taken out the uh, the first giant elephant thing. Oh, yep, the divine beast. The divine beast. Get it right, beast. mate. All right, <laughs> this is part of the Come Zelda. On, I'm, I'm on like two hours sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm loving it. I did not realise how big the, the world was for this game. Like It's crazy. And the fact that you've got to fill in the map yourself yeah, yeah, is love it. fantastic. I spoke about it in my Hollow Knight review, actually. The joy, yeah. the joy of being lost. I think it's one yeah, thing that open world games have lost themselves. The, the chase the waypoint. It's yeah. the worst thing about open world games. Mm. Yeah. Can't stand it. And I've got to say, after playing Breath of the Wild, where you literally are presented with a field and they say... Well, it basically just goes, go over there. Yeah, well, <laughs> and you go, well, how do I get it there? It doesn't even tell you I'll to just get walk. there. It doesn't tell you to get there, though. It just gives you like 10 amazing vistas to look at and you go, what's going on over there? And then you yeah. just I wander on over. that thing. Exactly. <laughs> And then oh, you'll get like you know attacked by a beast. You end up over there. You're in a completely new area. You don't know and, what's and going one, on. The other thing I really love about it, I know it's kind of a review. This game's been out ages. I'm just a bit behind. Yes. But is is the amount of weapons that you can pick mm. up from anywhere? Um, I was a bit upset at first when my weapons kept breaking. Yep. But you pick them up at at speed and. And it forces That's you fine. to change your play style on the fly. I was a bit worried about the weapon breaking system as well. But like you said, you get so many and you quickly find your favourites. And once you upgrade your, your character, I suppose, link enough, you can carry so many weapons that you're never really going to run out. It's just those yeah. initial stages, well, stages are quite hard. It enforces variety, doesn't it? It mm. changes the way you play. Instead of just stock standard, I'm running with this the entire game. Mm. It forces yeah. you to change your play style. 100%. Up. Yeah. yeah. And I personally have been delving into We Happy Few. This is a game we were kind enough to receive a review code for, and I'm about halfway through that. Uh, I've spent hours with this game, probably probably about 10. I've almost finished the first main story. But I suppose, and I, I want to start off saying that this world is something that I adore. I think the, the setting is fantastic. I think the story that they're trying mm. to bring to life is amazing. It's post-World War II, isn't it? Post-World War II, but it seems like the Germans have won, and... Not only is this England in the 1960s very much repressed, where yeah. everyone's taking this medication called joy to keep them happy, even though the reality is absolutely horrible. In fact, in the first five minutes of the game, you rock up, you think you're at a birthday party, and you're hitting a, pi a piñata, but then you snap out of your joy and you've killed a, like a giant rat. Oh. And mm. all the people around you are really excited, there, and they're like eating... What's inside it? Thinking it's well, a pinata. Well, this sounds like a great game. I'm just saying that's how it messes with your head. And that's that's right at the start. So if you if you get that picture in your mind, you quickly get expelled, I suppose, from that main area of the game, which is the central hub that you're trying to you're working to get back to, and then you've got to weave your way through these essentially abandoned areas where other people aren't taking the medication. You meet weird people along the way. I suppose my biggest issue is the moment to moment gameplay because. It's a first-person game, that's fine. I'm all good with that, but I think the stealth is hurts it a little bit at times because every combat situation I've been in where I've been presented with a big room of enemies, and if you crouch, you can see their footsteps. So it's almost like a, mm. a Last of Us where you can listen yeah, you to them through, the, sort of thing. Yep. through the, the walls. But it's a little hit and miss because it is only the footsteps, and it's hard to see people that are, are far away, so you end up choking out one guy and inevitably you get seen. Yep. And I think the moment where the combat sort of felt like it wasn't necessarily worth it for me, or at least that the situations weren't as well constructed as I necessarily would have liked, is when I was trying to get out of this sort of army barrack area and I accidentally alerted one of the first guards that I saw. And immediately I had 15, 20 enemies swarming me and I just thought, stuff it. I'm running. I can see the exit. That's where right. I need to go. <laughs> and I just bolted. And I ran through 15, 20 of these, you know, enemies and made it out okay. All no right. issues. So, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So that yeah. that had a bit of a, an issue with me. Of course, this is... an it sort of gets rid of the suspense if you yeah. know you can just run through it. Yeah. And let's be honest, We Happy Few is, at its heart, an indie game. I know yeah. they eventually had, you know, 50, 60 people mm. working on it. And I really love the vision for it. I'm really enjoying the story so far as well. I think it's been fantastic. But for me, potentially the especially the the melee combat, first person, just isn't hitting the mark. I yeah. don't know if you've had this experience with first person. Uh, many times, like Warhammer Vertitude, Vertitude, I can't remember what it's called. Some of those. Yeah. <laughs> first person always seems to struggle a bit with uh, melee combat. Yeah. I, I, like even the even the older scroll games are a little clunky yeah. with the melee combat. So. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's a common issue mm. with and first I think persons. That's my problem with it as well. There are there are times where I'm trying to block or I'm trying to hit a, an opponent, and it's almost like because your body doesn't really feel like it's got too much weight to it. Yeah, I take a swing and I end up almost on the other side of them, and I'm like, where the hell did they just go? And I've got to like <laughs> turn around and they're behind me, you know. It's and then all of a sudden you're surrounded. So. Look, I still haven't finished. Um, at this stage, I, I think for, for me, it would be a, a good play as per our uh, review our system. Our rating system. Yep. Our rating system. I, I am really enjoying the storyline. And I think just the, the world and the way that you sort of unravel what's happened to your brother, who's, you know, at least this first character in, this, in the storyline, you're, you're looking, up, um, looking to reunite with him after he boarded a train as a child to go to Germany. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they do it really well. And there's a lot of extra story you can get by reading certain articles or whatever you might want to do. And I, I love that stuff. So I was fully engrossed in everything I could read, you know, first up. But it was just those little bits and pieces into the combat, which I'm a bit iffy on. I'll give you the full review on mustplay.net.au when that is all, when I'm wrapped up with the game. That's all the goodness, boys. That is must play for this week, episode nine. Hard to believe that next week is going to be our 10th episode. We'll have to celebrate. Get a, get a cake. Yeah. I promise you I'll bring a cake. <laughs> it's hamburgers and snacks tonight. I'll get the cake in <laughs> next week. Let us know, of course, what you have been playing in the comments below or send us an email at mustnet. Uh, oh, sorry, mustplay.net.au. Uh, you can't even say our own website, boys. What's going on? <laughs> Plug, Mark. While you're there, why don't you give us a big old thumbs up for me being borderline <laughs> dyslexic. That was my doorbell. And <laughs> <laughs> that's all for this week's show. Thank you again for watching and good night. Although it's, your mum's got the dryer on and it's nice and warm. Yeah, mum has heated up the, the garage. Shed, the shed is great tonight. <laughs> yeah.